Welcome back to Fall the Road, and welcome back to the 1967 Julia 1300Ti, which is actually my daily driver. This car has served me very well as a daily runabout. Um, I've done nothing to it since I bought it from the previous owner, except I've put TZ1 Julia Super Ti wheels on it from Classic Alpha, which have been great. I put some stickers on it, and I put roof racks on it. That is it. But today I finally decided that it needs a little bit of love. It's always a thing the daily driver just gets neglected. And uh, the biggest issue I have with this car is the Solex double barrel downdraft carburetor from a, uh, it's the TI carburetor and this is a Julius Super 1600 engine. And uh, usually it would be fine. I think the 1600 TIs had these on them. 1600 and 1300 TIs had these carbs. However, this one's not in such great shape. Uh, Yeah, if you take the air filter off, the top of the air box, and... Um, just leave that there. Um, you can see the two barrels, and it's like somebody's been in here kind of grinding stuff away to make it more aerodynamically efficient or something. However, this emulsion tube is just completely loose. It's a bit beaten up and broken and just rattles around. And if I pull this out, which is probably now happening yeah it just it leaks fuel at like an incredible level so this car it doesn't really idle it's very f inefficient in terms of uh, fuel economy this carburetor could be repaired but i don't really like it that much and i've got a set of weathers waiting for it a much better option so i'm going to fit these to the car instead and uh, possibly replace the front section of the exhaust because it's pretty noisy Right, I've got quite a lot off uh, now. This is my first time working with one of these um, single carb manifolds and it's kind of complicated, but it's getting there. So the carb's off, airbox is off, distributor cap is off just to give me some space. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is drain the radiator. And uh, it's an early radiator, so it doesn't have a proper drain on it. It has a valve that sprays fluid sideways and it's uh, on the bottom of the radiator on this side down there. So it's gonna make a huge mess, but there's, this is just like, pretty cheap antifreeze, so I'm not really worried about spilling it. So I've let the radiator and the cooling system mostly drain out. And while I was doing that, I undid all the bolts, you know, all the nuts in the top of the inlet manifold. And the one at the back, uh, that's down on this side, that was super difficult to get out. Um, you have to drop the throttle linkage out the way. However, I think this manifold should be loose-ish now, <laughs> or not. So I've got that manifold off. It came off relatively easily, um, but it's very different to the gasket that's going on. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of, uh, quite a few modifications with the, with the piping for the heater. I've already cleaned up that gasket surface. So it's ready to get a new gasket, which is over here. Here's a new gasket and uh, the new manifold that's going on with solid carburetor mounts, which is great. So yeah. That's ready to go on. Right, I've um, I've got the new manifold on there properly um, with a new radiator top hose because that obviously changes and um, I've rerouted a lot of the plumbing as well. Sorry, it's a bit dark. It's a bit dark in here. It's getting quite late. So I've rerouted the plumbing and 
yeah, I'm going to keep up with this tomorrow morning. However, the big thing is going to be finding somewhere to mount a fuel pressure regulator because these side drafts definitely, definitely need it. You can see this car and most of them, they have this little plate in the engine bay uh, where your pressure regulator bolts onto. Uh, this car doesn't seem to have anything. So yeah, I'm going to work that out in the morning. Um, obviously that's going to be done before the uh, new carburetors can go on. Uh, yeah. So plenty to be, to be getting on with. Um, yeah, I'll pick this up in the morning. Last night, I ran into uh, an issue installing the carburetors, and that was that I didn't have a pressure regulator bracket. I got on Instagram and asked some of the people in the Alpha world whether these cars, 1300 Ti's, had those brackets, and apparently they don't. So I'm gonna weld this in. I've made it look as close to po as possible to the original ones in the Sprint GTs and the Julias and that, so it should look pretty good. Um, I'll throw some primer on it once it's welded in and it should look okay. Uh, I've got my welder kind of set up. It's not really dialed in, uh, but it should be okay. Right, um, that's welded in there, kind of. Um, it's a pretty ugly job. Uh, I'm not a fabricator. I really wish I was a bit better with welding and metal fab and that, but that should do, that should be all right to hold a, uh, just to hold the fuel bracket. I mean, it's, it's functional, it's not pretty. Um, whatever, this, uh, this entire car is uh, functional and not necessarily that pretty. Right, on to the next thing. These are the carburetors that I'm going to fit to the Julia. They are Weber DCOE 4s from my Sprint GT. And uh, these are specifically designed to go on a 1600 Alpha Twin Cam, so it's perfect for this application. Uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to take the, the air box um, off of these, and I'm going to use this air box from these 2-liter GDV carbs, because I'm also going to use a 2-liter a, um, a GTV air filter so that'll fit well so I'm going to swap these carbs onto here and um, also clean these carbs up a little bit while I'm at it and uh, I'm going to clean up the fuel pressure regulator too it's looking a little bit grubby it's not old it's this is only a couple of years old it's just covered in a few years worth of road grime and stuff Right, the carburetors and the fuel pressure regulator are now ready to go. However, before I install those, there are a few things that I want to do in here before it gets too crowded. And the main thing is replace the distributor. Um, this old standard one, it was working fine, but I've got this one, two, three ignition uh, unit, which is actually really nice. So I'm going to install that. And it's relatively simple. It's a very easy thing. Um, all you have to do is make sure that you have a correct coil and then get the engine to TDC, which is where I've got it, or um, it's on the static firing mark at the moment. And I'm going to pull that distributor out. Let's see. 
notice that it's pointing cylinder number one's firing water was right at the bottom nice loose right that wasn't too tricky Find the number one cylinder on this. That's this one here. So number one on this cap is the one here at the top. So I'm just gonna turn the whole body of this thing around. And, uh, so uh, now that that's in and in roughly the right position, to get a good static timing on a one, two, three, what you do is connect the red wire up to the positive on the ignition coil. And uh, obviously that's connected to the feed from the ignition switch and what you do is you turn the key on just on the ignition just flip that and uh, you turn the body of the distributor in the direction that it um, the direction that the rotor arm spins while the engine's running and uh, then you turn it the opposite way make sure that you put some tension on the rotor arm so you take out any slack and you rotate the body the other way um, until, yep, yeah, until that little green LED lights up. There. So that's a pretty good static timing position. That will fire the engine. So I'm going to tighten it up and leave it there. And uh, also, uh, I'll connect up the rest of the stuff on the coil and the, dis and the cap and everything. And I think I'll change the plugs while I'm at it. So all the plugs for this were pretty badly gunked up and that's obviously because it was running on that Solex that was badly out of shape. Um, weirdly, it had two champions and oh, three champions, one in, <laughs> uh, yeah. Three champions, two different heat uh, ratings and uh, one NGK. So, uh, not brilliant. I'm going to <laughs> switch to all uh, NGK BP6 ESs on it now. That should make it run a little bit more consistently. Now, because I have a nice modern electronic distributor, I'm going to have to obviously put some new spark plugs in to get the most out of that. And um, I've gone with the NGK BP6ES, which is a pretty standard like road car um, plug. And um, using a BP6ES, um, the standard recommendation for these cars is like 0 0.025 of an inch in the gap. But because I'm using an electronic distributor, I could probably push it to around 0 0.030, and that is in a European, that is one point, uh, 0.7 of a millimeter. And that's kind of where this plug is right now. So I'm gonna check all of these out, make sure they're all the same, and uh, get these in.
Welcome to another day in the workshop and uh, yep, the carburetors and everything are off the Julia again. Um, it didn't go very well. When I put this inlet manifold on, I forgot to seal. And um, there's like a little hole right on the bottom, like down here behind the manifold that uh, for the early 1600 Ti, and 1300 Ti in that manifold. So it has like this little water passage and I didn't, um, even though this is a super head, it has the, uh, the same casting and I didn't seal that hole. So when I got the car running, it basically just poured coolant down the side of the block and onto the floor and I took everything apart um, yesterday and then put it all back together and got it running and it did the same thing. And then I took it all apart and uh, I finally got the inlet manifold to seal um, but through no, uh, it was no small task really. So I've made a custom gasket and I just drew out a template with this gasket material. Installed that so like the leaky water hole would be like here somewhere. Uh, and then I sealed it with that sort of copper gasket sealant thing. And I like painted onto the head, sprayed the gasket on both sides, sprayed the manifold, everything went completely overboard with sealing it. So now it should be, I filled this up with coolant and it's not leaking. Um, so fingers crossed when this thing goes back together, it's actually going to hold water. That's pretty promising. There's no coolant dropping out the bottom of it, which is a big change from before. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be cautious and say it's fixed. Um, just gonna put the airbox on and uh, I think this is where I'm gonna leave it for now.